One of the major concerns that has increased rapidly across the world in recent times is physical health. Everyone has suddenly been awakened to the cruel reality of life that physical health is the most basic need and that you can't afford to ignore it. Not anymore. Your body is the physical world you represent. The minute you walk into a room, people can tell a lot about your habits as well as what you think about yourself just by looking at your body. One can look at your body and tell whether you abuse your body or look after yourself. Here is a simple truth. Without enjoying great health, energy, and vitality, all the riches in the world can never be enjoyed. The sad thing about human nature is that people want to pay attention to health only after they realize that they have symptoms of a degenerative disease like diabetes or when they have their first mild heart attack. Our human body is considered the most sacred temple in the world. Though we intellectually know that, we don't treat this temple very well. Let's assume for a fact we begin to take care of it. How do we care? Very often we care for the fitness and we assume that we are caring for the body. These days a vast majority of people talk about fitness and they think they're actually talking about health. Well, there's a big difference between health and fitness. Fitness is the physical ability to perform an athletic activity. Health, however, is defined as the state where all the systems of the body, nervous, muscular, skeletal, circulatory, digestive, lymphatic, hormonal, etc., are working in an optimal way. If you look in the dictionary, you can do it. Open up a dictionary. It says right there in a medical dictionary, the definition of health is not just the absence of symptoms. It's actually 100% function. Function of all the cells, all the organs, and all the nerves in the body working perfectly. It's actually function of your physical, chemical, emotional, and spiritual well-being. The quality of health we enjoy is due to the flow of energy we experience every day. When there is a hindrance to the flow of energy, we begin to lose the ease with our body and thus strike the dis-ease. Bottom line is this. The quality of health is energy. Energy is built in the cellular level. Energy comes from the cells. Cells are the building blocks of every living being. Health, life, and death starts, created and ended, in the cellular level. Cells are the building blocks of our physical body. All physical parts in our body are made of various cells, and cells need oxygen and nutrients to produce energy. Cells must have oxygen. Anything that diminishes the level of oxygen in the cells of the body is disease-producing. The blood is delivering the nutrients and oxygen to the cells. Our bloodstream acts as an environment to support the health of a cell. All healthy cells have the ability to absorb oxygen and nutrients, and they also have the ability to eliminate the waste in order to stay healthy. This means that everything we put into our body has to be either assimilated or eliminated from the body. A healthy cell produces energy in a healthy environment, namely a healthy fluid and bloodstream. Therefore, the environment has a direct influence on the cell. A healthy environment keeps the equilibrium, and when that equilibrium is lost, disease strikes. Let me give you an example. We all know that garbage attracts rats. Dirt dumps attract cockroaches. Killing rats and cockroaches won't solve the problem in the long term. As long as it's a dirty environment, they'll keep coming back. It's the condition that attracts germs and diseases into our body. Let's say you had a garden, and in the garden were weeds and garbage, and on top of that, you were watering it with sewer water. Well, obviously, your garden wouldn't grow well. And on top of that, you'd have a whole ton of critters showing up, um, feeding on the garbage, and munching your garden. I mean, environment is a key to whether or not something can grow and thrive, right? I mean, would you rather be a fish in, in a nice clean stream or one in a stagnant pond? Well, it's no different in your body. Your internal environment really is going to dictate whether the fluids in your body, whether the 150 trillion cells in your body, whether they thrive or whether they don't thrive. Imagine you keep a goldfish long enough in a bowl of water without changing the water. 
you have a tank, there are fish in there, they're eating, then they create waste, nitrogen waste. They're also breathing, and as they respirate, they create CO2. As that builds up, the pH drops. CO2 is acidic. Well, if you don't correct the pH, not only are you going to get an algae bloom, but you're going to get a bunch of sick fish. Now, most people will tell you if you have a sick fish, the first thing you're going to want to change is the water, the environment, the pH. But our normal medical practice is the other way around. We take the sick fish to the doctor. It gets treated, and we put the fish back into the same polluted environment. We treat most of the symptoms, and we continue to let ourselves live in a polluted environment. To study health, we need to study the healthy environment. Since everything about health happens at the cellular level, let's delve deeper into the subject. Cells communicate with pulses of electricity at a micromolecular level. All cells need electromagnetic charges to function as healthy cells. Our entire human body is working on electromagnetism. What makes electrical power happen to a healthy cell is the delicate balance of our body's biochemistry. Our body maintains biochemistry at the cellular level with positive and negative charges. Chemistry makes the environment possible for electricity to be there. Anything that messes up the electrical balance is messing up the body's cells, messing up your organs, and messing up your health. The smallest building blocks of life, atoms and molecules, are micromagnets with a plus and minus pole, comparable to the Earth's poles or comparable to a battery cell. What determines the biochemistry and the balance of a healthy cell is the acid-alkaline balance. In an alkaline environment, the red blood cells swim faster and are less prone to clotting, which means they can absorb and emit more oxygen and nutrients. On the other hand, in a high acidic environment, the blood cells will lose their electrical charges and start sticking together. When the blood cells stick together, they lose the flow and less oxygen is supplied to our cells. Gradually, cells become weak and they die. When they die, they pour more acids into our system. The environment gets even more polluted. A spiral of negative events occurs to make things even worse. Now acidity increases, and high acid in our system is a big problem. Why? The reason is high acidity causes all kinds of disease. And above all, the creation of acid in our system breaks down our biochemistry. The blood is a living liquid organ that is our life mm -hmm. and our health is in direct relationship to the health of the blood it's because all of our organs and tissues and glands are made from our blood and that blood the focal primary site of that blood production is made in the crypts of the small intestine what I affectionately call the root system of our body when that part of our body is healthy and strong we build healthy blood and in turn from there we build healthy body cells that build up our organs and tissues and glands. Mm -hmm. Our body needs a healthy balance of acids and alkaline to keep the electromagnetism of our cells. Now maybe you've heard that the pH of your blood, which is the most important fluid in your body, the pH of it doesn't change much. And that's actually true. But some people will go further and say, well then the pH of your body doesn't change. And that's not true. The pH of your blood must be regulated between about 7.3 and 7.4. If it moved out of that range, you would not be alive. Well, the only way then your body can deal with excess acid is to store it, to move it away from the bloodstream. Like any other waste, acids must be neutralized and then disposed of through your bloodstream in order to be carried out eventually through your colon or your kidneys. That's how you eliminate waste. Well, if you have so much acid that you can't buffer it and you can't neutralize it and dispose of it properly, um, you can't just dump these acids into the blood, which must be narrowly controlled. So your body has a mechanism to deal with that. It's called storing it. It'll store it in fluids. It'll store it in tissues and fatty tissues. It'll store it wherever it can in order to keep the blood pH where it optimally needs to be. Most of the health problems or diseases we experience are the result of our intelligent body's work to maintain the acid-alkaline balance to save your life from the biochemical imbalances and from death itself. Our body needs to keep the acid-alkaline balance in the bloodstream at 7.36, otherwise you'll die. 
You see, acid is very toxic and the body has to get through. through it has to eliminate these acids through the four channels of elimination. What are those? Respiration. We breathe out acid. We take in life-saving, life-giving oxygen. What's the others? Well, urination. You have to pee your way to health if you want to be healthy. If you're not peeing regularly and eliminating your waste products, then that acid's going to go into the connective tissues and into the fatty tissues. For a woman, that means breast cancer. For a man, it means prostate cancer. You don't want acids going into the connective tissues and into the organs and glands. So urination is very important. That's why we test the urine. The, the third elimination organ is the bowels. You should be eliminating the bowel at least three to five times a day. If you eat three to five times a day, you should have three to five times the eliminations. Most folks, especially children, are not eliminating regularly. In fact, they'll go for days without eliminating the bowel. This is a stage for acid buildup that can lead to an epidemic which is around the world now called type 1 diabetes. Mm. The fourth elimination organ is our pores. We have 3,500 pores per square inch, and these pores are, open, are openings that allow for gases, we smell those in the form of body odor, or liquid waste that are coming from the lymphatic system, out of our tissues, out of, through the sweat glands, we remove waste products, which makes exercise so vitally important. When the blood cells lose electrical charges in an acidic environment, they begin to stick to each other. When cells stick to each other, the flow of the red blood cells gets reduced. This means less or no oxygen to other cells. Where there is less or no oxygen available to cells, they begin to die or mutate. When they die, it again pollutes the environment, which means more acid is created in the system. When a condition of oxygen depletion progresses, some cells get disorganized and mutate themselves to survive in this unhealthy environment. Cells try to adapt to the new acidic environment, and they become bacteria. This mutation of a healthy cell into bacteria has been videotaped and studied by several modern biologists. It is what happens, not what it is, but what happens to this rod bacteria that is significant because it's going into what I then videotaped and captured for the first time that I know of and I've showed this at Vienna University, I've shown this at Chinua University, I've shown this at Oxford University and now we're showing this at Harvard University which has never been seen before the biological transformation of bacteria into a red blood cell and then bacteria out of the red blood cell. It's reversible. This phenomenon is called pleomorphism and it has shocked medical science and microbiologists. This biological transformation occurs when a healthy blood cell mutates and becomes bacteria in an acidic environment and morphs back as a healthy cell in an alkaline environment. An environment that is well balanced with alkaline and acid is the key to a strong immune system. Bottom line, your blood is either a river of life to all your body's cells or a river of disease. I believe it's time for another medical revelation. Now stay with me on this one. Listen very carefully. In this case, let's imagine a scenario. Let's assume that you've consumed poison accidentally. How will your body react to the poison that's in your system? How will your body work against this poison intake? What will be your body's intelligent response to keep you alive? In most cases, when poison is consumed, your body will try to get rid of the poison. As a result, you'll experience severe symptoms like vomiting, diarrhea, dizziness, acne or fever blisters, mucus, convulsions, fainting, joint pain, fatigue and perspiration, etc. You'll also catch fever because your body heats up to speed up the process of eliminating poison. That is too much demand on the body. The body also wants to sweat the poison out. You'll get the symptom of headache because oxygen levels in the brain have also been interrupted. Bottom line. You can add as many symptoms as you can, depending on the type of body that's infected and the amount of poison consumed. The truth of the matter is that these are nothing but symptoms when the body is infected with poison in the system. Now tell me any disease in the world that doesn't have any of these symptoms. In fact, these are the symptoms of most of the diseases in the world. Any physician can testify to that. What does this all mean? 
This means that symptoms and so-called diseases are nothing but the functions of an intelligent mechanism called the human body trying to get rid of the poison inside of it. Now, get ready for the biggest medical revelation. Disease is actually the cure. Symptoms of disease are a curing process of how the body is trying to get rid of its toxins. All the symptoms are nothing but various means of getting rid of poison or toxicity inside the body. The cause of disease or the symptoms are not the real problem. The real problem is the source. It's the environment. What attracts germs to flourish in our body is the environment. The accumulation of toxins in our system causes disease. The paradigm of treating symptoms is an old paradigm. Now is the time to change. Modern medicine now advocates that all disease are lifestyle-related diseases. If you lead a lifestyle that malnourishes your system, you will attract diseases. And if you lead a healthy lifestyle, you will be quite disease-free. Quite simple. We don't catch diseases. We cause them. We create them by the way we live. We don't catch a cold or flu. We actually earn it by fostering toxic waste conditions in our bodies as a result of our lifestyles. We have a society that monumentally conspires against the pursuit of health. We have wave after wave of labor-saving technology that says don't ever use your muscles for anything along with messages that you should be more physically active. We have every year the introduction of hundreds if not thousands of new highly processed foods, the majority of which glow in the dark, at the same time we're telling people eat foods closer to nature. And we have crazy hectic routines that wear everybody out without doing any of the physical exertion that would actually be good for them. We have schools where we teach children to sit still all day long so they can become adults we can't get off couches with crowbars. So there's an awful lot about our society that is at odds with the basic message of don't smoke, be active, eat a healthy diet, and by the way, control stress and get enough sleep. We don't make those things easy. We ideally would make health lie along the path of least resistance. But if, ne if not the path of least resistance, there at least needs to be a path so you don't have to bushwhack your way there. The foundation of health is a healthy bloodstream the system that transports oxygen and nutrients to all the cells in your body. If you have a healthy circulatory system, you're going to live long and lead a healthy life. The environment is the bloodstream. Then what is the control button for the system? It is breathing. We all do it, but we don't really do it well. A lymphologist based in California by the name of Dr. Jack Shields found that deep diaphragmatic breathing could accelerate the process of toxin elimination from the body by as much as 15 times. He put cameras inside people's bodies to see what stimulated cleansing the lymph system. He found that a deep diaphragmic breath is the most effective way to accomplish this. It creates something like a vacuum that sucks lymph through the bloodstream and multiplies the pace at which the body eliminates toxins. In fact, deep breathing and exercise can accelerate this process by as much as 15 times. Now, most important, we want to make sure our chest is open. We're standing up straight or sitting up straight. We want to make sure our chest is open so our lungs are open and we can get the full amount of oxygen. So we breathe in. We're going to breathe in for three seconds through our nose and feel as if you're breathing into the, into the stomach, into the diaphragm. And then you're going to hold it for three seconds and then you're going to blow out of the mouth for four seconds. So it's going to be like three seconds through the nose, breathing into the diaphragm, into the stomach, holding it for three seconds and breathing out of the mouth for four seconds. Your body is comprised of 70 to 80 percent water. So after oxygen, water is the most important nutrient. A dehydrated cell is a dead or unhealthy cell. Under a microscope, the difference between a healthy hydrated cell and an unhealthy dehydrated cell is best illustrated by the difference between a grape and a raisin. Health experts suggest that your diet must consist of 70% water-rich food. A water-rich diet consists of fresh fruits and vegetables or their juices freshly squeezed. 
Eat food that comes out of the ground looking the way it looks when you eat it. If it's processed or packaged or it's got trans fats, these all increase shelf life, but they shorten human life. Walk 30 minutes a day. You don't have to do that at the end of the day. You can make it part of what you do every day, like use the stairs instead of an elevator. But 30 minutes of extra walking that you normally do every day. Exercise every day. Doctors of longevity tell us that all increased blood flow is good for the brain and also lifts our spirits. Exercise leads to perspiration, which is another way of getting toxins out of our body. Exercise makes you feel better and gives you more energy. High energy performance comes from movement. Exercise is the single best method available for decreasing the tension and stress that rob you of mental energy. The fastest way to get out of stress is to work out. Regular exercise will certainly help as this can increase oxygen and hemoglobin levels whilst also providing happy endorphin hormones to neutralize some more toxic hormones. It is decisions that determine the quality of our health. The lifestyle decisions we make every day determine our health and diseases. In the near future, the real improvement in our health care is less likely to be driven by the advancement of medical science than by our improved decisions in dietary changes and our healthy lifestyle.